Hello and welcome back to another Jazzcast, uh, joined as usual by Donners and Alan Fraser and we have a special guest, it's been a, a fantastic week actually for, for this show, um, to a great performance away at Peterhead last Saturday and then um, terrific performance on Thursday night in particular, they've probably been the, the two standout performances of the season, so it's looking good for Thistle suddenly, whereas two, three weeks ago we were all suicidal about another, perhaps another season in League One, but they've certainly given them a chance. As you can see, we're also joined by someone else who's won a title or who's part of a club who've won a title this season, uh, with Hearts running away with the championship this season, and we'd like to put it down to the fact that they've kept a few clean sheets, and that's down to go goalkeeping coach Paul Gallagher, who's joining us this morning. Welcome, Gal. Good to see you. How are you doing, gentlemen? He's all right? Very all good, good, Paul. Very yeah. good. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Well, we'll look forward. We're going to talk about, briefly, about your career. We're going to talk Scotland. We're going to talk about Thistle. We're going to talk about 12-13, but not for particularly the way you're thinking. I know I've wound you up about one. I will mention that particular <laughs> goal right enough. Yeah, but there's quite a few things happened that season. We'll talk about how difficult that must have been. Um, but come back, I mean, you joined the joined the United, you're a Glasgow boy. It was quite going for this all, I think. Boys yeah. Club started back, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously goalkeeping, we just need to mention your dad. <laughs> was that always going to be a thing that you were always going to be a keeper or um it's something um when I first went to, to primary school, we moved from Glasgow to Paisley, um, and I just wanted to get involved in football and just sort of gravitated to the goalkeeping position. Uh, my dad never put any pressure on me to be a goalkeeper. He just wanted to back you, whatever your decision was, and, and see how it materialised. And thankfully, I did okay for myself. Um, Playing-wise, I, I got to a decent level. Um, so it was great to have my dad there, who, who played at a high level himself. And he was always there for sort of constructive criticism um, and backing and, and coaching points required. So it was great to have that in-house, so to speak. So, no, it was, um, it was never... Um, thrust upon me, shall we say, to be a goalkeeper. I was just yeah. out of the position. Yeah, your dad was never, he was never full-time as a goalkeeper, was he? Was it always just part-time? Part-time, the Clyde Bank, yeah. Um, he was, I broke briefly and then went to Clyde Bank um, and, 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 and worked away and ended up working the Whiskey Bond um, at Hillington, the White Horse. It's hey. probably his name a few times around there. But uh, no part-time, I think a few clubs for higher end um, were after his signature, but he remained loyal. Uh, and stayed at Clyde Bank, um, obviously playing the Premier League as well with them. Mm -hmm. I think he got to Scotland B International as well. So, no, he did okay, but I think the chance was was there at times, but he, he never really took it. And and he, he obviously retired when he was about, what, 67 or six years from Goldsburg, was wasn't he? Actually, I know, I know. <laughs> were you were you ever were you ever a um, goalkeeper as a profession at the same time he was still playing? And did you kind of go training with him and things like that, or be involved in games with him? He briefly took us on coaching sessions, maybe at my younger age, um, at Dundee United. Um, at that time, the goalkeeping uh, role, shall we say, goalkeeping coach role, sorry, wasn't really a full-time position. It was maybe a few guys that dotted around the country and, and maybe like Jim Stewart, mm -hmm. my dad, um, were like putting me session on at certain clubs and then in the afternoon they'd go to another club and that sort of thing. So the way football's moved and modernised, the, the roles became a bit more important. Um, I've obviously thought throughout my whole career it was a vital role because predominantly we're a bunch of nuggets and we need protecting <laughs> somebody like after us and maybe taking away a corner and, and worked hard because you, sometimes you're, you, you're battling against many different elements from supporters, from players, from management, everything. So you need to have your own wee clique, shall we say, um, and form bonds and just try and push. So no, as I said, going back to the early days, my dad helped out with some coaching now and again and was always there as a, as I said, to, to give input, constructive criticism and that sort of thing. Show that yeah. at times because it's not all um, fun and games when you're a goalkeeper. You need to have a, there's a lot more lows, unfortunately. It's <laughs> about 20 years for Clyde Bank, is that right? I think he was 21 playing uh -huh. years, yeah, give or take, yeah. yeah. Like that. So it was, it was a long time in the game. Uh -huh. coaching, um, um, and uh, briefly... Moved on to Dumbarton to do a bit of coaching as well. Um, so no, he's, he's still going strong. Seventy year old, um, just in March there. Uh, he's still doing some coaching within the academy at Air United. Mm -hmm. um, so no, he's still going to kick a ball about mm -hmm. and, and push goalkeepers and try and improve them the best he can. So no, he's um, he, he loves the game. He, his involvement um, is it's a massive part. Um, I would say he liked when I played. My brother played, but he was scared to come and watch us. 
Uh-huh. Um, whether obviously the critique for a goalkeeper always at the end of it and he took mm-hmm. things to heart or going to watch my brother who would end up like, punching a striker. You're an absolute madman. So 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 you you are the actual definition of following in your father's footsteps, not not just the not just the, the playing, but also the coaching as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and the hair, I'm starting to lose that. Is <laughs> 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 that what's behind that, that big cliff? I <laughs> as soon as I've been <laughs> <laughs> you, you know we used to give you absolute pelters when you were playing for Dunfermline when we were yeah. behind the goal up there. But I always, when, well, my son was around yesterday and was saying we were doing this today, but he said, I was to ask you about that, because um, you always seem to take it in uh, in good f- faith. It was fun and it was a, a laugh. And you always gave the, the, the away crowd a bit of a wave when you were finishing off at the game and stuff like that, you know? I, I love the banter. And uh, it's great. I do. It obviously gets personal. And I'm not going to lie, you do go home at times and you're like, oh, God, here we go, kind of thing. But uh, <laughs> not at the time. It's just I've tried to distract you, put you off. I've had many different... Things said to me, thrown at me, everything. I've had snowballs, coins, I've been spat on. It's no great. Um, oh, that's not good stuff, man. Yeah, it's not great, but it happens in football. Um, but the banner's brilliant. You can't beat it. It's absolutely tremendous. And uh, it's great because you want to get one over on them and, and give mm-hmm. them a get it up, these kind of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to applaud them, home, away fans, whatever. Just it's great. They're, totally, they're paying their hard earned cash to come and watch you perform or sometimes not perform. <laughs> um, you've got to respect it um, but no I always had great rapport with the, the Thistle fans obviously playing with them great but um, yeah. when, they, when they were sort of the enemy shall we say giving you dogs abuse but at the end there's a mutual appreciation and, and you've got to hand it back um, I've had a, one story it was a Thistle fan was giving me absolute pelters slaughtering me I think it was a, a no film at the time and he's calling me a mm-hmm. My allegiance towards a certain club, he's called me like a Rangers fan. I'm not going to use the term, but a certain colour man. Uh-huh. And maybe a B as well. So he's giving me absolute dog's abuse. And I don't follow Rangers or Celtic. I've never been that way. It was always Clyde Bank was my team. So he's slaughtering me. And he charges down the back of the stand, right to the front. He's spitting on me. His pie's flying out his mouth. Not called me all sorts. So the Polish give him up and he's out of there. He's gone. So continue the game. Um, I think we won actually at the time. So we'll leave that one. So I think, is that what you said? I've, I've applauded the fans. Cheers, thank you. Fan or whatever. I go inside and the Polish chap door. Is that Paul Gallagher there? I'm like, oh, fuck. I've, I've been <laughs> <able to> be. <laughs> they told me, You've been obviously sectarianly abused by a punter. Do you want to charge him? I was like, no. Nah. So he's just banter. He said, a few too many to drink. It's fine. I do not want to press charges. No chance, not at all. No, no, are you sure? We've, we've got him on camera the day. Obviously, the body cam on. I said, no, no, I'm not doing it. No chance. No press charges, so boy, get let away, whatever. So I'm then working at Thistle, and we're away to Ross County. So I'm warming up with Foxy. Foxy's playing, I think. So I'm just at say a goal, coaching away, and that this guy again doing, oh you, I'm like, what are you? oh Gallagher, I'm like, what is it? He went, you get me arrested. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, you get me arrested. I said, no, I never. I said, you've abused me. I said, mate, I've actually helped you. We're not getting you arrested and chucked in the cells. I said, I did press charges, not. Oh, did you? I came here who gave me a cuddle. He's steaming at <laughs> me. He gave me a cuddle. He's standing on. Oh, you're a legend. You're a legend. Cheers, man. <laughs> Fucking brilliant, honestly. <laughs> there could be a few candidates amongst their support who that could be. Because... Aye, aye. Probably, <laughs> aye. We'll, 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 have, we'll have a competition. That can be a good <laughs> one or something. <laughs> but it's just going back, going back to the, you know, starting out at Dundee United, um, that, you know, you became a regular for the under 20, Scotland under 21s. Um, you were then capped as well, eight caps. Uh, where that was under Bertie Votes. What a man! What a manager! <laughs> what did he say? There must be some. You must have some memories of Bertie. <laughs> no, he's just he's a very unique character. Obviously, um, very passionate. Um, it just didn't quite work out at the international level, but he gave an opportunity to a lot of players. Obviously, a lot of great ones. Obviously, but I'm ever um, indebted to him for 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 getting the the joy and the privilege. Of representing mm-hmm. the country on, on a few occasions, it's a it's a pinnacle of your career. You want to go and play for your country, and I was fortunate enough to do that eight times. Um, obviously, the, the first cap was away in the Hong Kong Select, the infamous trip that Paddy went missing, I believe. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was great. Honestly, just to represent your country, as I say, it's a pinnacle of any footballer's career. And I was very fortunate. But no, Bertie was passionate. He, he loved the role. He, he loved to. Um, 
try and get a bit of camaraderie. Night before a game, you always met up and had the, the infamous little beer or a glass of wine to sleep well before games kind of thing. So <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was very unique, but um, I think getting a Scotsman a beer is maybe not a great thing at times. <laughs> <laughs> it's the problem is you just kind of stop at one, can you? Yeah, <laughs> oh, you can, yeah, that's for true. But no, I've got to be honest, it was just a, we found it difficult. We couldn't get into that that mentality. I've heard it before of Italian coaches, maybe for a lunch, having a little wine with a pasta, <laughs> match meal, stuff like that. And Bertie was just a, a little, a, a quick wee glass of wine or a wee beer just to help you sleep. But to be fair, a lot of the boys, obviously being Scottish, would love to have kicked on and had a right good sesh. But... <laughs> We knew the importance of playing for your country and what it meant and very fortunate to do that. So nobody ever, ever would drop the arse out at all. It was very, yeah. so I've got to admit it was professional. It was just funny to see the option there, but it was fruit juices and, and the guys went to their bed because, as I said, it's sometimes you'll never play for your country and to have the opportunity, with regardless of who the manager was and what people thought of yeah. it, um, it gave guys opportunities and whenever you pulled on that jersey, you gave it your all for your country. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, mistakes happen. Things do happen in games, but wow, to play for your country is, is, is incredible. I mean, it was a barren time, wasn't it? For in terms of you know, from what we've been through the previous decade, you know, it was we, we just made major championships. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there was still some good quality players involved. The setup. Can you can you think of some good players that maybe didn't get the recognition that that, that, that they deserved? I think most got the recognition deserved. International football is really difficult to, to fulfil and to stay in squads and, and play. Of course, there's guys that come in the periphery and from in and out of sort of squads, but no, I think the vast majority went on and kicked on and made good careers for themselves. So there's nobody in there I thought, oh, maybe they could have got more caps. I think there was a deserved guys kicked on. As I said, Faddy, for example, young boy came in yeah. and went and done brilliant for the international setup. So no, nothing springs to mind. But that MD missed out, that the country's not missed out, and this talented player that mm-hmm. everybody that plays for the country deserved it, they got their own merit. Mm-hmm. Um, we are a small nation, we're, we're not um, got this glut of talent we can choose from. Um, yeah. I think at the time we had some fantastic goalkeepers, a very strong position, ones that were coming through. Obviously, Big Craig he kicked on after me, um, so it's, it's not bad to be replaced by Craig Gordon, so to speak, and <laughs> probably the only time I could hold myself in the same sort of um, situation is Craigie because he's an absolute, and you're coaching him. I'm coaching him now, which is delightful <laughs> because we tried to get him last year and, and we couldn't get him for one reason or another and uh, stuff like that. I'm not going to go into stuff, but uh, we've got him now and he's been fantastic for us. Um, but his goalkeeper system was always strong for us with Marsh, uh, Griggsy at the time. So, um, no, it was always a strong position. So, it was great to be involved in that point of view um, with the squad, but also some really talented goalkeepers. So, it was always a strong position, I felt. I'm not holding myself in the same league as some of these guys. I was fortunate to make the grade. And as I said, eight caps is, is more than enough for myself and delighted to even achieve that. I take it you'll well, wind up, Craig Gordon, and say to him, you know, if he's complaining about the extra runs or something, you'll say, well, you took my place in the Scotland squad, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is payback well, time, eh? Well, big Craig doesn't run. He just chills and makes it. <laughs> Does no, he? It's, um, we've had to modify sort of training for Craig, obviously. Um, because he's an older guy, um, but he's been brilliant, honestly. He's, he's literally missed about three training sessions his whole time. <coughs> um, it's, it's a big coup for us at Hearts to get Craig in. Mm-hmm. Um, he's sort of came full circle from starting there. He's got a yeah. fantastic career and he's just continued to be there. He's a, the ultimate professional, lovely boy, um, great work ethic. So we're, we're very proud and privileged to have him at Hearts at this moment in time. Well, you had a spell, that you, you went down after United, you went down to Norwich for three years. It, it would be fair to say, I was reading up, and I'm reading through some of the stuff, it was uh, a very a very up and down time, although yeah. you were starting to get noticed for fair. You know, he says, but you get it. Uh, there was some guy called Marshall came in and replaced him. And what happened to him? Yeah, again, I've seen been making false careers here, don't I? No, it's, it's very true. It was very mixed career when I was down south. Um, I went down there, leaving Dundee United um, as a young kid. Playing at United was fantastic. I think 130 odd games it was. So yeah. loved my time there. Came through the academy setup. I felt at the time it was the best decision I made because they had a a great reputation of bringing young players through, and it was massive that that was available for me. They gave the opportunity to kids, so it came through. I think from my youth team, I think eight of us maybe progressed to play first team football. Yeah. So it was great um, experience, loved it. 
living in Dundee's well, moving away from home and settling there in Diggs with um, we get Jim Parks in at a time, so we're just two young guys trying to make a name for ourselves and it's difficult moving house and it feels like you're on the world. It's another up the road for Daisley sort of thing. It's not as a <laughs> miles yeah. away, but it's a young kid. And, but you want to give the opportunity and try and make a, a name for yourself and you get the opportunity at United. So forever forever in the regret uh, uh, debt, sorry. I'm very grateful to have that opportunity. Um, but obviously a, a few fantastic years there, played my football there, enjoyed it, got an international setup, uh, and I just felt time was right to try and move on and progress, and it was to go down south to Norwich. Unfortunately, I got injured a couple of weeks into pre-season, tore my yeah. muscle, and you end up always chasing. They then Robert Green was the goalkeeper at the time, they signed Darren Ward, so you're always chasing to try and get in the squads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, change of managers, your face doesn't yeah, there was- there was some amount of managers right enough. Yeah, you know, they, they had a real high turnover. I was looking yeah. through and I'm like, I think I counted five or yeah, six. Four or five in my time anyway. Um, Peter Grant was there as well. So you think my Scotsman coming in, you might have a chance, but obviously <laughs> I like to, to, to bring Marsh in. Um, Marsh, great goalkeeper, young goalkeeper at the time, had just made a name for himself at Celtic, obviously. Yeah. <clears throat> he got injured as well, so I get another chance to go back in. You get injured at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, so I go in and finish the game at Stamford Bridge. Great experience. We lost 4 0, which wasn't great, but it was like <laughs> 30 goals, by the way. Before you <laughs> a great experience. Me uh, yeah. Robin, Strongless, <clears throat> sort of guys. It's like unbelievable. Per Check played, so I got his jersey. It's just things I could never imagine I would have achieved to play at that mm-hmm. level type thing. So fantastic experience, great memories, but ultimately the football wasn't quite what I imagined. Uh, and that led me to come back to Dunfermline purely yeah. for football. I needed game time. Jim leashed my phone, drove through the night to get there for the game. Registration wasn't done properly, so I had to miss out. So I'd, it was just calm, but great. Well, that way for nothing. I basically was at times. So I played the fall week, which was fine. But again, it's you want to play football. As a footballer, that is it. That's your outlet. You work all week, you need that outlet to play football. Um, and it wasn't quite happening down south. Mm-hmm. I could have. Stayed there and try and dot it around clubs and that, but no, yeah, about football. It's not, it's never been about money. Money's nice, of course, it is, but for me, it's playing football, it's making a career for myself, playing games. And I tried that injury curtailed a lot of things, but at that moment in time, it was about football. And I think it was League One at the time we were in, yeah, yeah, that's right. 08 09, you were yeah, alone, yeah. Football. First and foremost, play football, football, that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and the games came, and it was great. And I earned a new contract. But your performance at the Celtic the film, and I mean that, that then got you. You spent two years with Saturn and the Premier. I, I was you back. You were back in the Premier League again, playing, and you two two good seasons there. You know, you won a couple of the money and stuff. It, it becomes when you, you want to play football, and again, it's getting playing week in week out. The the confidence starts rising again. You want to push the high level. Unfortunately, with the film, we couldn't quite materialise, and, and it didn't materialise. Sorry, we didn't push and get into the top division, St Mum came calling, it was a chance again to push myself and try and say I can still do it at that level, because you mm-hmm. always want to better yourself, you always want to show I can do that, I can play at high levels, mm-hmm. um, and that was the case at the time, um, so you go there and Premier League football, again, Dunfermline came calling again, it was like a club that I felt comfortable at, I enjoyed my yeah. again, a great rapport with the supporters, I live in Dunfermline still, um, so I'm I'm in around the place all the time. And it's a great club, it really is. Um, but I wouldn't get back there, play yeah. my football, and then obviously. Well, I mean, was it your debut? Uh, ironically, I don't feel when, when you signed in 2011 was against St. Mern, yeah. which you saved a penalty, and then you saved a penalty two weeks later again. <laughs> I had no bad record. <laughs> it, I think it was until I came to, to Thistle, you guys, and I don't know who done it, but somebody got up all my stats, my penalties, and Early, early doors, it wasn't the ideal. But then I started saving a few. It became quite a good record. Yeah. It became something that followed me. And yeah. I didn't okay. I remember at Thistle saving a couple as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing. nothing better. What a feeling to, to contribute something at such a pivotal moment in a game where it can it can turn the game like that. Um, so, no, I was very fortunate. I, one thing I was good at. Was shit, everyone else really wanted yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, brings, that kind of brings us around towards the Thistle thing. 12-13... Thistle and Dunfermline going for the title and then there was the 
the problem is we, we'd, we'd gone to Stem Park, uh, we, we Lawless had scored and we'd won one nothing. but there was only a goal, if you remember, in the November game and it had been built up. I think, from memory, I think we built, the club had done something like a like red and yellow day. This was huge and it was a, I think it was about six, 7,000, 6, 7,000 in the game at least for that. And then, from our point of view, it was brilliant. <laughs> Maybe not quite so much for yours, Paul, but um, that dink face odd. I was basically lying on the ground and he's lifted it over me. I'm not having a dink. <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic finish for Sod, let's let's be honest. Well, funny yeah. enough, you look at you look at Sod, you know, he doesn't score many goals, and we, we remember that when and it was one against Morton year, a couple of years earlier, and then the Dundee United goal. And then, like, and then last night, a 35 yarder. Yeah, I've noticed that one, but uh, the Thistle one, I started, the, I started that off, obviously, rolling out to the fullback. So That's right. That's right. So as much as you dink me, as you keep saying, I've set up problem. <laughs> uh, keep me getting back and across as well, so I don't know what I'm going to think about. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that season, I mean, that everything everything kind of, it didn't just change on the part that weekend, but it changed off the part for the Fairman as a club as well, because... It was just a bit. I think it was the following day, actually, or, or it had been the previous day. The, the rumours about being financial trouble. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been ongoing for a while, to be honest. Obviously, in house, we knew there were situations going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Obviously, now we know there's a bit of mismanagement um, and whatever's been going on. But yeah, we were obviously not getting paid our salaries, and then it was bit part. And it's difficult because you've got mortgages, you've got bills to pay. Yeah, you feed that sort of thing. So it's, it was tough times. Uh, at the time, we felt we had a really strong squad. Obviously, any team I played with, I'm going to win a game of football. I go and I don't care. Yeah. Who I'm, I'm winning games of football. That's the way I've been brought up. That's the way my mindset is. I always going to win a football match. So we had the good squad, as I said, and I felt we were going to go and win the title that year. Um, but obviously, the, all the financial implications, the issues, it affects you. We're having meetings, yeah. guys, on the show whether to play or not because you're putting yourself at risk. If you get injured, you're out of the game, there's no money coming in. So there was a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, so it was difficult, it really was. Um, we'd meet and draw time, oh, you get paid this time and that time, and it came and went. So it's hard to, to motivate yourself, it really was because it's it's distressing times, it's difficult, it's it's, it's hard, it really was. And you don't know when your next wage is coming in. Yeah, we stuck together the best we could. Um, it was, as I said, it was tough times. There's, there was, there was people that worked within the, the club that couldn't afford to pay bills and we are, as players and staff try to chip together to help them pay their bills, their mortgage, whatever it may be. So you're a very family orientated club. It's very mm-hmm. safe. Yeah. That's safe, nice, yeah. Honestly, very safe. <laughs> but you're up against the big boy, so to speak, so you need to dig in together. Um, and as I said, the, the bad news came eventually that we were being made redundant, um, which was it was horrible. You're sitting in... Um, with your peers and the administrators come in and basically Tim Jeffries has got the list of names and he just says guys we've got to do this to it you go to that top room and basically you just sign that show away thanks, yeah thanks but just get to that kind of thing oh. so they read the names out and you're having to walk by your peers and it's a mixed emotion of they're delighted that they've still got a job but yeah friends and we're kind of you need to go and go school leave the club sort of thing you have no money you only had three days to actually get another club because of the obviously the transfer window and the fair play. You can't sign for a club towards the end of the season. Um, you can't just jump in. It's one of the things with the rules. So we'd three three. try and get something. Fortunately, it wasn't yeah. in for me. So I went up there for six months. Yeah, six weeks, sorry. Yeah. But some guys did, they didn't get anything. They had well, we picked something. up Jordan McMillan and Andy Dowie. Yes, yeah, so they are yeah. in the season. So they came in there. What a guy Jordan was, by the way. <laughs> He's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you half of the stories he gets up to? You? <laughs> <laughs> can. What a guy, honestly. Brilliant. Great addition. But again, we had some big characters in that dressing room. So when I, when I obviously I went to the Ross County, which is another brilliant club. Um, I was only there for, I said, six weeks. Played one game against Inverness, beat them 1 0. So not a bad record. Up Point sheet. Point sheet, I know. So it was great. And then obviously, when it fits, we can discuss that. But, uh, Jordan yeah, well, back as well, so but always one guy. But no, the, the, the redundancy thing was 
it was so hard to take. I was doing um, still coaching as well at the time. I was just started out, so I was doing mm-hmm. coaching at the academy, uh, Dunfermline, with the young goalkeepers, and uh, I was helping out at Aloha as well at the time. So I'd literally just been made redundant, and I was like, "Oh, I'm away Aloha to do my coaching now." So I turned up, and they're like, "Oh, well, how are you still in a job?" I went, oh, "I've just been made redundant." They're like, "What the hell are you doing here?" I went, well, "I've got a job to do. I'm trying to become a coach." And like Hartley, yeah. Hartley was like, "Are you sure you're all right?" I'm like, "Well." I can't change it, can I? This is yeah. my focus now. I just I love my goalkeeping. I love goalkeepers. I love the art of it. Mm-hmm. It's I'm trying to improve myself as a, as a person, as a coach. Mm-hmm. And, do it. and I've just had the horrendous news that I'm out my ass, so to speak. <laughs> I've not got a job, but I'm, I'm a wait a lot to do my coaching. Um, yeah. Because they've gave me the opportunity, the platform to try and work with a first team goalkeeper in Scott Bain at the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it was a great opportunity to, to do that um, but he couldn't believe that I'd just been sort of made redundant sacked so <laughs> I call it, and I'm doing that so it's mental times really crazy but Aye. I still have an affiliation with the club I still like to go and watch them when I can obviously it's difficult now with the pandemic mm-hmm. um, I, was, I was going to say to you Gal because that was the one thing I remember about that season um, obviously the Dunfermline fans because in the March I think was, we were on the this, this over, up back up at East End Park and, and Stephen Craig had a, an absolute drama in that game with a great first half there. But that game, we weren't sure that game was going to go ahead at one point, but the Dunfermline fans, I remember, because it was four, it was four and a half, and a half time, and the Dunfermline fans cheered, applauded the players coming back out, the, and I thought, do you know something, that, that's, that's the tie. You don't see that at many clubs where you're four nothing at half time and there, there's... You know, the, the the response for the fans, I thought, was terrific that day. No, it's huge because a, a lot of them don't understand what was on behind closed doors behind the scenes. Yeah. I think a lot was starting to come out. It's a small town, obviously, so a lot of stories come out and you hear things. So the fans obviously get right behind the boys and try and push them and help them. And just a little fact about supporters and what they can do for the club, obviously, currently I'm at Hearts. And it's the same with our fan base. They're absolutely incredible what they do mm-hmm. for the club. And mm-hmm. the money they invest and through the pandemic it's been so difficult but mm-hmm. they've continued to show their support their allegiance and, and, and invest their, their money so it just shows you the power of fans and what they can do to clubs and help clubs and and the backing you receive at times and i understand there will be times fans get frustrated when it's not going your way um but there is a lot goes on behind the scenes behind closed doors as i said and sometimes you yeah. appreciate that in any walk of life and works people don't know what's going on in your life their life whatever yeah. We all want it to be great and rosy behind the scenes, but it's difficult at times. But yeah. the fans can play a huge part. And currently our fans do that at Hearts. They are incredible. The backing, the support, it's unbelievable. And I said, no, I've done that. Thistle have done that on numerous occasions, as I said. Yeah. When I went to Park to Thistle, I always said, the, in the back of my mind, it's always the, the sort of small club with the two giants in Glasgow. They dominate everything, but mm-hmm. you've always got a wee affiliation and a wee, a wee thing for this. So a lot of folk have, they have, and it's like a lightning. And just the way you go about your business, and as I said, the staff at this when I was there, brilliant, <laughs> absolutely amazing. And you've not spoken for yet, afraid of yet. You were telling me. I'm coming to my The staff are incredible. They're just <laughs> on it together. You have to fight tooth and nail for everything. Nothing's handed to you. Nothing's yeah. happening to you, and that's a lot of clubs I've been at through my career. You have to earn the right for anything at the club. Nothing's just given to you in a plate. You see, see, you see the time, see that time just before you joined us, Paul. Obviously, you're going through a lot personally. Yeah, we, we did Fairmont, but that's we're playing incredible football at that point. We were saying it was a kind of golden era for us, yeah. the kind of two years with Jackie and Archie. Um, what was your memory of that? Did, did, did you look at Thistle off and think, oh, God, that's that's a great set of players and, you know, as an opposition player? Yeah, no, definitely. There was the uh, Doolin Lawless, uh, Squaddy, they sort of that trio, could, they could just operate up front and any, they, could, they could dot around any position. The, the transitions were so quick. Stability in the defence, that kind of thing. They just played with utter freedom, up top especially. Interchange, yeah. not a problem. Creativity was there, and it's when you're playing against that. Sometimes you go, "How do we stop this?" And at times you can. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, when I went to Thistle, and I got to be a teammate of those guys, and some are brilliant, like ridiculous, lawless magician, 
I think I'd said that before, before a TV game. Uh, I think it was David Tanner I spoke to, and he was just asking about some players and that, and I just I was like, he's a magician. And he used that, he, he coined that phrase too, uh, we all he was like, nah. <laughs> but he is, he's like, the ball was like, st- stuck to his foot at times. He couldn't get off him. And he just drifted in out. Squiddy, very similar. Just can drive by folk without even thinking about it. And you're like, how's he get by me? And how's he get into this position? <laughs> and Dules is just one of the best players I've ever played with. Like that guy, best first touch. I've ever seen. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And his story, his journey is incredible as well from juniors coming in late. And what a player, what an what an athlete, what a guy. Brilliant. And whenever I see him at a brof, I played him recently, you get the hug, how you doing, mate? That kind of thing. We're still yeah. up, up there. He's a lovely boy, such a nice guy, and deserves everything he's had in football. Mm-hmm. Um that's one guy I probably think should and could have been at the higher level for much longer. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. great guy, and he, he looks after himself. He's getting his coaching now as well. He's trying to do that. He's yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah. Which I obviously I wish him all the best in, and I hope it goes from strength to strength, and he gets success. And um, but lovely boy, as I said. But as I said, the, the trio up there, the transitions, the movement, it was just unplayable at times. And <laughs> to be part of that, you're like, thank God for that. <laughs> I used to <laughs> like, you know, like shoot at me all the time and that. So <laughs> in that, that position, but no. <laughs> But I mean, what did you? You're absolutely right. I have hundred percent what you say. But did you think we could do that in the Premier League? Because you know, you're you're, you're going to a different level then. And at times we did, didn't we? We we, we looked apart. Although we didn't get the results, we, we, we should have probably um, usual kind of thistle losing late goals and maybe not scoring as much. But we did play some stuff. Yeah, no, some fantastic football mm-hmm. was played at times. There was a belief there, obviously, with teams coming up. There's that inner belief because they've won a championship and they go in. And sometimes you. You give those guys the, the opportunity to go and shine in there, and it's difficult because you, you maybe should add a bit more quality at times, and but you still want to give them the opportunity because they've earned the right, hundred percent, they've earned the right to, to go and try and show what they can do at the higher level, and we did do that at times. But it's always you know, against big teams, big clubs, huge budgets. It's difficult. Um, Scotty football is not like the Premiership down south, where inundated with sponsorship money, and these guys are just willing to give you cash to go. And buy and spend as you please. It's not like that. You, as I said, you have to work hard and earn the right. Mm-hmm. And we were an honest group of lads. We gave it everything. We we worked together. We worked hard together. We socialised together. Uh, the staff had a great bond as well. So you're working in a tight group. You know, hopefully that resonates with the players as well. And we had a great squad there. The beauty of my role was the player coach role. So I could be yeah. in both worlds. Um, and I've always been I feel, I feel an honest guy that way. Some a player could say something to me, and I would never report it back. That's not. A, I was the player. I was a teammate at the time. But at the time, they had that much respect for me when I was coaching. They would listen to me. Obviously, the goalkeepers with a great little group there. I've been very fortunate to work with your Scott Fox, your Brian Scullies, um, Thomas Cherney's to name but a few. So I've been very fortunate that I've had great goalkeepers, great lads. Mm-hmm. That's the ultimate thing: great lads. Mm-hmm. Never, never a bad egg. Nobody to deal with in a, in a serious manner. They got on with the work, they do the work. And with me and Foxy, we pushed each other all the way. Mm-hmm. I wanted mm-hmm. to play, he wanted to play. And I felt, I felt I actually played quite well at Thistle. I yeah. Felt, I felt it was probably one of my better consistent times. And I think the fans enjoyed what I could do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've never said that I am the best goalkeeper. I am not the best coach. I try my best. I tried to improve myself constantly and I just, I enjoyed my time. I enjoyed my football and I had the opportunity to do both roles for the first time. So it was, it was great to do that and I'm a bit forever thankful for that. And Archie and Scott had given me the opportunity because it came out of nothing. It was literally, my time finished at Ross County. I went to the Youth Cup final at Hamden, just bumped into Archie and Scotty and just talked to their ex-teammates from Dundee United. Chatting away, and they were like, Oh, would you, would you consider coming with a player coach role? Like, money, money will be shite, but you want to come? I'm like, <laughs> Well, point, <laughs> where do I sit? We'll have a wee chat, kind of thing. But again, it's just, there's not a lot of money to this, so there's not. It's getting the yeah. right people in to do the right role and push each other. But uh, the, the opportunity came with a chat, and I was like, Oh man, I'm sold. It's great. You don't need, I know the guys, and I, I just, as you said, playing against this. So, I knew the type of characters they had in the team. No big personalities, nobody big time. 
it was yep. just a, a good fit for me at that time, and mm-hmm. it and it helped me fulfil my player coach role, which you don't play forever, of course you don't, but you want to have the opportunity to play. Unfortunately, I think I played a right few games anyway over both seasons. Well, did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good to say actually. Just before we go in to talk about the, you know, the the seasons, let's get back to penalties because I know we've given you a bit for the five one and everything like that. But two weeks later, uh-huh. cup game, you saved a Ross Forbes penalty, which rolled right along the line. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, I've saved Ross's penalty and then I faced him an hour time. I can't remember. It must have been before that. And I watched his footage, and he always put it to a certain side. So I thought, he's gone the same way again, I've died there, and he's put it the other way. <laughs> oh, fair play to me, man. So Ken, I just gave him a applaud. Like, well done. But he's a very good player, and he strikes the ball well. So no, I got fortunate with some saves, and big saves as well. Um, it, was, it became, as you said, a, a bit of a, a niche for me. I kept making some good saves, big saves. Even I think it was Barry Robson I saved one. Yeah, and the rebound as well. First home, that was our first home win uh, that season. That was 13 14 season. That was uh, Aberdeen, I think. Big, that was the one Big Lyle scored twice. Right. And he absolutely ragdolled Aberdeen that day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and all, all, there was another penalty you'd saved. Although your debut was your debut was a one each draw up at, up at Perth in the September of the 13 14. Then your home debut was to the January. Because Foxy was back in again, <laughs> which was also a one a one all draw. That was against Kelly, um, but then the penalty save a few weeks later against Aberdeen, and then of course the, the even the following season still follows you. <laughs> you remember Foxy getting sent off and what happened next? Aye, came on. Dead spark, wasn't it? Huge penalty. Aye, aye, aye. Chiefs, Chiefs, your first touch save the penalty. Because <laughs> uh, I'm coming on, and obviously, like, Dundee fans are my most favourite. Let's just shall we say that <laughs> when United is a kid, so I'm getting on there and I'm getting fucking dogs abused, <laughs> abused. and then I saved the pair. So obviously, turn down and just let them know how much I enjoyed that. Uh, it was a big, <laughs> obviously, right in front of the Dundee fans as well. So it couldn't have worked out any better. Um, <laughs> did Foxy punch Gowser or something like that? I think there was there was something pretty harsh about the sending off. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, maybe try to punch it away, maybe caught me goes or Yeah, something. I think so. I, I. Oh, it's a different red card. Ah, get me on. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know yeah, something? I mean, Paul, look, looking back on it, I mean, Foxy was in the Scotland squad, wasn't he? At, at, at one point, so. You, you must have maybe accepted to yourself you weren't going to play that often. You know, he'd, he'd, he'd a great, had a great kind of um, back book of, you know, his, 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 um, his time in the, in the first division was fantastic for us, you know. So there must have been an element that you thought, I'm just going to concentrate on coaching to yeah. bonus time to play. Well, that, exactly. From what I've been through from redundancy to <clears throat> club, probably the first time in my career, really worrying about where my next contract's coming from. Because... Football's been my life since 16 year old when I left school and went full time mm-hmm. in United. So I'm not educated. I can't just walk into certain walks of life. You have to go in the right to get something or, or go into further education. So football's been my life. That's it. That's all I've ever known and loved. So the, if you can't play, you want to go into coaching. So player coaching for me seemed the next logical step. So going to, to Thistle was a, it was a, obviously fantastic to have the offer. I was doing my coaching, so I knew I could do the coaching still wanted to play. So it became the role that I felt beneficial for myself. Mm-hmm. And I thought I might get a few games, but you still back yourself. You still yeah. believe in your own ability. Um, and thankfully it, did, it came to that. Uh, when I stepped in, I did okay and, and played well. And I said, enjoy my football. But at the same time, it was great to push Foxy to improve him as a goalkeeper as well. He got into the Scotland squad. I'd, obviously his family will be immensely proud along himself, but so was that. We take personal pride in these sort of things to play a mm-hmm. small part and I will never say that I got him into squads. And I worked with Jackie Hammond <laughs> on the hearts, and I, he became part of Scotland Self and John McLaughlin. So it's great when these guys go in and, and Craig Gordon go back into Scotland squads. So I know it might sound like I'm full blown trumpet here, but I'm, 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 I'm not. It's just. You've been a pattern here, gal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but to play a small part is fantastic, and I take immense pride in that. It, it, it might just be some coaching points or the way you coach or just how you handle them. Because they're young goalkeepers. There's, I've got Craig now, uh, an experienced goalkeeper who's done it all. 
he can tell you he thinks he played at a far higher level than me. But I've had to adapt as a coach to to make sessions more suitable and adaptable for Craig. And he's, as I said, he missed three training sessions the whole time he's here. He had he was playing in the past with injuries. He's he's been flying for us because he's now a one. He's playing regular football. He gets his recovery time. He does his strength program. He gets maybe the right coaching because when you're a two, a number two, sorry, you're you're mm-hmm. maybe not playing, so you're doing extra work. You're doing more shooting, whereas the one can just go and play, recover, get going. So it, the roles change. So as a goalkeeping coach, you need to identify this. So sometimes you're not playing. Two needs pushed a bit more. He needs arm around the shoulder. He needs controlling at times. He needs more training. So there's a lot of things you need to change with your methodology and philosophy in your coaching aspects mm-hmm. towards goalkeepers. So going back to Foxy, a goalkeeper that's done really well, but can you push him? Can you get more out of him? And then he becomes part of Scotland setup, which is great because he was doing well at the time and thoroughly deserved. Yeah. We, we get goalkeepers within the Scotland setup, and then if there's a few injuries, it's like, well, who's next then? So you you need to be that guy. You need to be ready. And yeah. Foxy was, and he yeah. got he get in the squad. And, he was doing well, as I said, another great goalkeeper. Work ethic is outstanding. Absolutely. Shot stopping was, was unbelievable at times, wasn't it? Frightening. And again, Foxy will, will not make me saying this, but obviously he's not the tallest goalkeeper. So he's yeah. not going to be dominant at cross balls. So you need to adapt. Mm-hmm. That might be the coach in your back four, your defenders being stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, but reaction saves, you're not going to find many better goalkeepers than a Scott Fox. Uh, a Jamie McDonald, for example, they're yeah. your the goalkeepers. They make outstanding reaction saves. Kicking's okay. We worked on that. It got better. He could use both feet. But as I say, cross balls is something that myself's not a strong part of my game. So you need to adapt. Come for the ones that are yours, whether they catch, punch, whatever, or give a big shout to your big dash out of house and get it in the clearly. That's a big con. <laughs> you get away, Conrad. That's the one. Good son. <laughs> So, so that's part of it as well. Being a goalkeeper, obviously, is it is organising that defence. You know, it's not just just your saves and your your, your own personal stuff. You know, and um, you can you can see that in teams. And you can see that in good teams. You know, and, and obviously getting in the head of the strikers as well, so you can put them off. Were you yeah. were you good at that? Uh, or time it right to catch somebody you don't like. No, you just... <laughs> <laughs> no, see, you're, you're see, see part of the role. It's part of the role analysis to get involved with transfers. So when Foxy left and Thomas Jernick came in, are you taking any credit of that? No, I can't take any credit for that. I can't. Uh, it was more or less a done deal. Uh, and the gaffer, Archie, spoke to me at the time. He said, Thomas Jernick, what are you thinking? And I was like, oh, very good goalkeeper. Walked to Hamilton. Uh, I know you're a goalie coach, so quickly do your homework. You speak to Potsy uh, and you find out great work ethic, that sort of stuff. Really nice guy. Um, so you quickly do your homework um, but no I can't take any credit for actually bringing him in it was agents for the gaffer he puts in the news like that. Mm-hmm. Like, well, yeah it's going to work so no I think um, I think Archie's got to take huge credit for that one to be honest mm-hmm. um, obviously at the time you're still wanting to play but then <laughs> got a, a good goalie coming in and Scully's still there so you kind of like, like the writing could be on the ball for me here but you still want to push and I, I end up playing maybe maybe one game that season again at yeah. the park my last, that's my yeah. last ever, um, competitive match, um, senior level. One, one oh, draw. That's right. That Scully, uh, Scully get injured. Aye. Coming for, coming for a cross ball. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing that for? I know. <laughs> Nobody. I tell you what, these cross balls, they're overrated. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never catch on. No, nah, definitely. No pun, in that. No pun intended. <laughs> um, no, it, it's, it was bizarre because I think I had two weeks and the build-up to that game, so it was like two weeks to get fit, gal, come on. So I was still training, doing bits and bobs, so I was always, I'm always fairly fit, but it's your reactions as a goalkeeper, so yeah. it's just a quick two-week training sort of thing, you blitz and then you get in there, and I actually played really well. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, It's usually man and match, all that sort of stuff, so again, personal pride, and I know it doesn't mean much, but even in the papers, you're in the team of the day, all that sort of shit. Yeah. You take it as a football you love. Oh, right. publicity and all that sort of stuff it looks good but it's the manager at the end of the day so I thought I was playing the next week he fucking dropped me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I was raging at that but um, no I, I, I didn't do myself an injustice I, I, I played well that day and I, I was happy and to, I kind of come full circle obviously Dundee United where I started the, Dundee was a, the club you were the rivalry so to play yeah. against them we were always, was quite nice 
get stuck again. So they still remembered me, so it was quite good. <laughs> um, what you're saying about the role between getting the number one, you know, as a, from a coaching perspective, yep. you know, making sure the number one's ready, but you're the like number two. How how does that work where suddenly on a Friday yep. you're the number two, but you're coaching number one and he's injured? How how can you how do you turn that round to think, right, oh I need to get myself ready? Is that does that become a mentality thing because of the experience? Yeah. Um being the, the one the two, if we're talking about myself and Foxy, for example, mm-hmm. I would make sure I'm prepared the right way as if I was playing. You, you can't mump and moan about it. Um but I still had a job to do as the coach. So if Fox yeah. was playing, I had to make sure he was ready. Or a Scully or a young Mark Waters, Connor Cullen, whoever it may be at the time. Yeah. They get their training and what's required and they get pushed. The one has to know there's pressure. The number one must feel pressure from the goalkeepers behind them. It can't be a, oh, this training session is device for Foxy, so it's all about Foxy. Foxy's a number No, it can't be. You've got to mm-hmm. be for Foxy, elements for a Scully, for whoever it may be at the time. Yeah. So I had to make sure I was all ready because, as you said, it can happen. He's out, you're in. Um, there's also been times where Saturday, 1 30, you're in the dressing room and I've been playing Archie, the gaffer, obviously. Comes to me and says, Gal, I'm making a change today. I'm putting Foxy in. I'm not happy. I've been playing well. He says, I'm just wanting to put Foxy in. Young guy, I want to see if he can cope and He's one for the future. Let's get him in there. Cool. So I go to Foxy, tell him, and he's like, you're kidding me on, girl. You're joking. I went, no, you're, you're playing the day. He went, nah, nah, you take the piss. I mean, you're playing the day. You've worked hard. You deserve your opportunity. You, you've, you've been doing great. Like, Don't worry. It's what happens in football. But the gaffer sees something in Foxy, and rightly so, he's a great goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. And he feels like, I, we need to have him go and play because he's the future. I'm not the future of Patrick Thistle. Yeah. I'm facilitating dual role when I'm fit I'm playing I'm doing well great but Scott Fox is your goalkeeper that's it I'm not stupid yeah. sort of thing. so you have to take the rough of this move at times it's difficult but it's just part of the role it's part of the process and as I say Foxy missed out I think he had I think it was food poisoning or something like that. he missed out and that's, that's why he took about food poisoning yeah um, I think that's what it was, a dodgy booner the night before or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but, uh, he was struggling and then I, I get in and that's how it happens type thing. And then he goes back in and he's the one. That's what happens and then I need to push him again. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a mentality thing, a mindset thing. Um, and that's fine when I'm the one the two. But then when I become the coach um, and, and you've got your goalkeepers to work with, you need to do the same. You need yeah. to motivate them to push in case the currently the hearts that Craig is injured then it's going to be Ross Stewart goes in. We've got Bobby Zamal, young Harry Stone here, type thing. Colin Dolls on one at um, Kamarnock at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to push them so they're ready. So if the gaffer needs, he says, who's in? He's ready. Boom. <coughs> and that's yeah. the mentality you have to do. So the work ethic must be there, which it always is with the goalkeepers. I've not had a bad egg to work with in my whole career, yeah. whether that be coaching or playing with um, fellow goalkeepers as well. So, you're a tight knit community, you understand the role, you know one can play. It's not as if you can, like a striker, oh, we've got to rotate. No, no, no. Yeah. Really, and what you alluded to with your defence, that backbone, so a strong goalkeeper, centre half, maybe a midfielder. So you're, you're that spine of the team to work from. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't change too often. Um, but no, you, you've got to understand the role. And it's difficult at times, of course it is, because we all want to play. Um, and that, at the end of my career at Thistle, when it, I got offered just a coaching role. As I said to you earlier on, you still want to play. So I still yeah. have ambitions to play or to have the opportunity to play, to be in a, a club that I could maybe play but still do coaching. And at this so at the time, that wasn't going to be the case. It was purely coaching, which I knew I would go into eventually, but I still felt I could offer something. Yeah. So when it came around to negotiate, it was really, it was virtually the last day when I actually spoke to me. So I was obviously nervous. I didn't know what was going to happen. And a, and a role was offered and um, wasn't what I was quite looking for. Um, I had all offers from Championship uh, League One clubs to, to play uh, and do a bit of coaching as well. So it was something I was intrigued about. Um, so I felt that was the, the avenue I was going to go down because it still gave me, as I said to you before, a train all week. You might have that outlet. You yeah. could be playing this. Yeah. 
football, that's all you want, that's what you crave for, that's that's that drug you need at the end of it. You, you, you work all week for that, you need the outlet. Um, so that it was still there, it was, the carrot was dangled, so to speak, that I could maybe play. And then from nowhere, gaffer, Robbie Nielsen, phone me, try and say a wee chat. All right. Give me what you're looking for. I play a coach role at <coughs> And I was just like, oh my God, this is incredible. <laughs> uh, Craig Levine speak to you, the formalities and that. And so Craig spoke to me and said, look, Robbie's really keen to get you in. Loves your attitude and what you've said and the way we're thinking. And as a player coach role, but you probably not going to play, but it was still that element there. And I was like, it's still a dangle. High yeah. level. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> get me involved sort of thing. So <clears throat> delighted. And then obviously I've, I've not looked back as such because I'm, I'm part of a of a huge club. Um, and I got to sit in the bench for a couple of games in the European stuff. And then the same goalkeepers. Um, played a couple of reserve games. Um, absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Still playing. It was something to do. But obviously yeah. that, that first team football wasn't quite there. And I think at the time when, when Archie offered me the contract, it was like he'd retired me. And I, and I couldn't Aye. get that. That was, I just couldn't get my head around it. I was like, no, no, I'll, I'll go on my terms. So even the player coach was somewhere else. It was still that I probably won't play, but I, I keep alluding to the fact that the carrot's dangled. You might. Yeah. You know, but I'm not stupid. I might, be, I might look daft at times, but there is something <laughs> that works now and again. But you wanted the one that was making that decision, basically, and not having made it for you. That was a huge element of it. It was, it was my call. I've never mm-hmm. really said, "Oh, I've retired." It's just it, you, you, it transitions into that, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Know, but it just felt it was in my hands, and I didn't want him to be the one that was like, "Hey, I should finish jumps for coach now." Mm-hmm. It's yeah. hard as a footballer. It's all you know. It's you wake up in the morning and want to play football as a kid, and so lucky to have that opportunity. For I think it was. I've done 21 pre-seasons. My body yeah. tells every morning, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so that's the outlet. That's the main aim. You want to play football. And then mm-hmm. you know it comes to a stage where you want to work at the highest level as a coach. Mm-hmm. So I'm now doing that. This is the highest level I've worked at as a coach. Um, loving it. Fantastic football club. It really is. Um, again, great staff. A lot of staff. We, we are a big club. There's a lot yeah. of staff here. Uh, it's, I run the club fantastically well. I, I know a lot of fans won't believe that, um, but she's mm-hmm. got a lot to deal with. But she's a fantastic owner. She really is. She's mm-hmm. got the best, the best interest of the football club at heart. She'd do anything for hearts. She really would. And uh, mm-hmm. we've got a strong manager in now as well. Uh, who's brought the place back, as you alluded to earlier on, with the, the allegiance with the, with the mate. Um, we can't really go into too much detail about all. All the stuff that happened, obviously. Um, yeah. I think we all understand and we all know it was Aye. extremely unfair. And yes, yes. You put it very politely. <laughs> um, I, was, I was going to say to you, actually, kind of, you are an experienced player when you came to this all with a pretty inexperienced manager. How did you see actually develop in that role over the years? He was there, he became the most uh, long serving manager at, at one point, didn't he, in the Premier League? Archie was a um, very good manager and I felt it was the man management skills that him and Scotty had with the players. Um, it was never a, oh, we're your best mates kind of thing. They just knew how to get the balance right and how to get the best out of players. As I said, there was free-flowing football. That's their mantra. Their mindset was about scoring goals and then being defenders might sound stupid, but that's the way they wanted to play. That There was a lot of focus on the, the lovely patterns of play going forward, but at the same time, because they were defenders, they knew what it took to have that solid unit to build from and try and be hard to break down, but at the same time, break at pace. Um, but for me, it was the man management skills, which were second to none. Absolutely mm-hmm. fantastic. And there's no um, secret. He's back there now, obviously, for a reason, because that's a major part of Archie's skill set is that camaraderie, that bond between management and staff and mm-hmm. players. He's got it down to a T. Results driven business, of course it is. Yeah. That's why you're judged. But behind the scenes, he had a, a lovely work ethic. The boys worked hard. They worked hard. Uh, there's no doubt about that. We had a lovely training ground um, at one point up at um, Gas Cube. Yeah. Yep. Do you know that sort of stuff? And uh, 
just back me calls the same. Trying to find which pitches you were training on half the time. <laughs> no, so my, you were coming up for us. You only turned up on Friday anyway. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us nicely round to Fajita Friday. So, what a day. For, for those that don't know, every Friday, Big G and Mario in the kitchen used to <laughs> do the fajitas. However, everybody would go away and get changed. The boys would go up and I would be maybe doing a wee interview or something for the programme or whatever. Uh, just catching up with Archie before the game and getting a feel for, for the commentary for the following day of what the team was going to be and all this. And you had to be lightningly quick to get up there because if Gal and Christy get in before you, Forget the heaters. Oh. True story. But I've got, I can't disagree with you. <laughs> Honestly. It's because uh, probably only the two of them. on a Wednesday. <laughs> uh, probably, honestly, it was class. Just straight in there. The food. Like Mario and Big God, they are honestly brilliant. Again, <laughs> characters. That's that's the thing about this. You get big characters there. They, you, you pay a cut of quid a week. They go to the shops. They get the produce. They chuck the food together. Um, so no, you're, it was always tomato and basil soup. But he is, right. you, know, you had to load it in quickly. That was it because a lot of <laughs> great boys at that club, honestly. Christy used to have a knack for jumping the queue. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? <laughs> used to <laughs> sidle up to the <laughs> wall or something like that and go, all right. And the next thing you know, Lois is standing going, right. "What are you get in front of me?" <laughs> <laughs> Few characters there, but no, straight in for food. For here, Friday, brilliant. Honestly, what a laugh. <laughs> just a running joke, but they, everybody loved it. Straight in, yeah. uh, absolutely class. But they go back to the characters. I've not even spoke about them. Rico, uh, Ricky and Chico. Ricky and Chico, Rico, yeah. Most brilliant, honestly. That's again just the camaraderie, the banter, the togetherness of staff at Arctic Thistle mm. was brilliant. And then once you're in there and you realise the two of them are just absolute jokers. And the moment you walked in, you could hear them. Brilliant. Young kids would come full time, <laughs> nervous and that, and you reckon she goes, oh boys, you need to go across the street. So the very first house, soon you come at the main doors, the players' entrance, the first house across the road, they borrowed their brush. So you need to go and chat the door, and just <laughs> ask for a brush back. So the kids are going, aye, go and get it back. They borrowed it the other day, need it back. Chat the door. Hey, mister, can we get the brush back? No, you again, get to the <laughs> 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 Honestly, brilliant. They send them over for mops and brushes and everything. I'm like, you can, 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 can you re- that. I was going to say, can you remember the first time you met them? Stephen Craig, remember he went because his dad used to play and, and they gave him an absolute dog's abuse. Did, did you get any kind of relations with that? Just, no, just nothing was safe, nothing was sacred. You get slaughtered, whatever it is. But they were just lovable rogues they were brilliant and just great lads and that was just they epitomised the togetherness of the club they would give everything didn't care who you were you were getting it absolutely <coughs> slaughtered you um, but they'd done the work they'd done the graft they were just brilliant characters and it's just that Glasgow gallusness they had it was brilliant and they made you feel so loved and welcomed but at the same time, they could make you feel that side. They could bring you <laughs> But they were just brilliant. Um, and that just, as I said, epitomised the, just the, the togetherness of the club with the staff. Fantastic. You were all in it together. And Fiona's still there, obviously. She did a yeah. as well, sort of thing. So, great. And as I said, when I go back there, I'm still friendly with the staff, same hellos and whatever. And, it's great. It's, just a, it's a wonderful club and I, I'm very privileged and honoured to play a small part in their history and for me to play there was, was an absolute joy. Absolute joy. Well, everybody that we've had on here has got a similar similar tale about this and really enjoyed their time here and it's great to hear it from, from most of the guys, well, all of the guys that have been on, on here, how much they enjoyed their time with this one, you know, because we really appreciated it as fans as well. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it was... You felt that from the stands, they they backed you, they gave you the support. Um, and some clubs, what you're going through, wouldn't do that. They mm-hmm. give you as much as they can, but at the time the frustration came. But they always backed you, always pushed you, and uh, there's always the banner. And as I said, there's, there's always that the small club underneath those sort of Rangers and Celtics shadow sort of thing. So you're mm-hmm. fighting the elements. You're always up against it. 
and you dig in together and the fans appreciate that. If you work your socks off in the park and give it your all, they can't complain and they don't. They give you the mm-hmm. back. And it was great. And as I said, even when you rocked up at um, player year events and stuff like that, and I was lucky enough to get a player year, they're always asking after you talking, wanting to know what it's like at Thistle and you're doing great. They give, if you need praise, they'll give you the praise. Um, they've never really slaughtered you. A wee bit of banter, which is mm-hmm. fine, which is understandable. But no, they really do back the football club. They really do. Um, we've been through a lot of tough times in football in recent years. None more so than obviously well, the three of us, ourselves, Hearts, yeah. Thistle and obviously Stranaer had to deal with it. And obviously, well, yeah, to be fair, um, the non-league teams as well, we could have potentially got yeah, yeah, yeah. promotion via the pyramid as well, um, playoffs and whatever. So it's been tough. Pandemics definitely affected a lot of football clubs as well. So you felt at the time that member clubs could maybe stick together. Um, but obviously one thing led to another and it wasn't to be. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> back to challenges. Uh, thankfully, we've come through it. We've, we've got promotion. It might not be the way we'd have liked to have done it. It um, wasn't pretty at times, but the aim was to get back amongst the, the elite, shall we say, and we've done that. That's what it's moment in time. I've given myself an unbelievable opportunity. Mm-hmm. As you said, a few weeks ago, you're thinking, ooh, mm-hmm. now it's like it could be automatic promotion, mm-hmm. i.e. playoff would be great to be involved in, right, okay, but it's still that uncertainty. But the promotion is now back on. It's uh, It's close. Um, but don't start counting your results and this is going to happen. That's no. <laughs> it does not work, believe you. I've been supporting Thistle for quite a long time, but I will not be counting. I, 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 we, we, I think we all have not been supporting Thistle for so long that you do, can I? <laughs> yeah. You know, can I think, oh, no, I've been here before. I mean, I, I've already been seeing, seeing a couple of my friends over here uh, in Lanzarote have been follow, they follow the Thistle results now and stuff like that. And they're like that. What's that chance they've got? I said, trust me, we'll fuck it up against the Barton or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you say, you supported the club for so long, you've had highs and lows, and you say, oh, God, here we go again. But uh, <laughs> to be fair, the guys have got themselves in a good position from, yeah. as you said, potentially being, the, okay, we'll get the playoff and it's a few games to go, but now it's like, no, we could actually go direct here and it could yeah. get yeah. done. Yeah. And, and it's, been, of- it's been a difficult time for everybody, obviously. You know, and it's a difficult time for... You know the big break that 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 league, the bottom two leagues have had, and then back on again and cramming these games on with not your usual um, like dressing rooms and all the rest of it. It's just you know you can't you can't be critical about anybody playing football right now. You know. Well, it's difficult because again I spoke about earlier on. The supporters don't know what goes on behind the scenes as well. Yeah. New protocols and guidelines and. But some of the stuff's just crazy that you can and can't do, obviously. You're restricted to a lot of things. And as you said, with the break, with the lower league clubs, didn't play for months. And then it's a shock for them to get fit again. There's potential injuries happening and that sort of thing. And preparation for matches is so different now. It's so different. You can't do anything the same way. Travelling to games is different. It's unique. Build-up's different. So your whole mindset getting into games is different now. Footballers are creatures of habit. You, you, your, your working week never changed and if it did it would freak you out it, you're yeah. culture that happened. you know how things work protocols and now it's something there everything's changed the world's changed preparation we are very fortunate to be working um, but obviously we've had to test every week that sort of thing so you're panicking test okay this 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 it's a real way um, fear factor with things and mm-hmm. do things right you don't want to contract anything and maybe put people in positions vulnerable and your health's huge at this moment in time so it's not only yeah. about turning up playing football you need to think of the, the bigger picture it's, it's worldwide it's global this thing yeah you try to do things right so it's difficult um fans have been magnificent with their backing and what they can do in very limited circumstances guys have paid uh, huge sum of money for season tickets where you're not going to get into a stadium to watch a game of football. That's just the love of your football club. And as staff of clubs, we are appreciative. It's incredible what fans can do. And I think that just highlights how much football means to people in this country and the world, but especially in Scotland. Yeah. It's huge. 
you grew up loving football, wanting to play football, and if you can, you back a team, you go and watch a team. If I couldn't play football, I would go and watch a team every week. It's, it's, you need it. It's just it's amazing. Football brings people together. It forms talking points. Saturday night, you're going for a beer. You talk football. That's it. Your partners, your missus, whatever it may be, must hate it. It's like, <laughs> kind of thing. It's just it's in our blood. It's our life. I just I love football, and I watch football, talk football. I might not understand half of it, but I don't know. <laughs> but obviously, but it's just it's huge what fans have done this year, and as footballers and as coaches, we've gave up a lot, but we're we're very thankful for the position we find ourselves in that we can come and watch football. It's new, it's weird in a stadium with no fans. Some players thrive with no pressure. Others need that injection of abuse to highlight them. Yeah. Others need tell them how good they are, give them that boost they need, that kind of thing. So they yeah. all work off fans in a different way. Mm-hmm. So it's it's strange to have the, the artificial noise going through the tannoy and you can it's just bizarre. It really is. We need right. fans back in as soon as possible. Yeah. That's what will be done when it's safe because you can't bring fans in and then suddenly a transition happens and you a few folk get ill and it, it spreads it. We, we need to yeah. see, I think the government, as much as they've come in for a lot of stick, they've done their best. It's unique. Nobody it's knows. unique, it's uh, exactly. It's difficult. The GLG, SFA, they've tried things. Do I agree with a lot of their rules and protocols? No. Has it been made up at times? That's for people to decide. <laughs> it's really difficult. We're trying our best. Football is now readily available, which is so fortunate that we can still see things and we can still form debate and critique and cheer your team on. And it's great. We love football. It's amazing. It's just it's a beautiful game. It really is. It really is. It's you're looking at it. Maybe it'll be beautiful when you're watching it. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking back at what's happened. You know, we spoke about you know, all the breaks and everything that's happened. It would be quite apt because after we look through the leagues, so Hearts have done their bit. They were wronged. They've won their league. You've got Thistle, still on with their chance. Also Falkirk, they can come up through the playoffs. That's fine. Don't mind that. Yeah. They were wronged last season. Yeah. And Stranraer are in the playoffs, the top half of the playoffs in the second division. And you've got Brora and Kelty awaiting the winners, which is looking very much like breaking. Maybe karma does come round. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that broader body either, do you know? That's <laughs> We don't like talking about that, no? Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I just had a look at the paper this morning. I thought, who had hearts played in the cup this weekend? <laughs> Somebody asked me that the other day, so I said, eh, we've no got a game. <laughs> <laughs> I totally yeah, forgot. Know. We were, we were horrendous that night. Uh, and we deserved the, the critique and stick that came our way. Um, Broder deserved it on the night. They worked their socked off and, and deserved the victory. But... And I mean, no disrespect, but Hartley and Gordon should be winning that football match. Um, yeah. We were devastated, we were embarrassed, we were hurt. We deserve the critique that's coming our way, as I say, thoroughly deserve it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm honest enough guy that way, we, we didn't do enough on the night. Uh, and it's something we'll have to live with, and the players especially. That, that we're on but that we'll but you with. know something, it's football, isn't it? I mean, it has to be good, you've won a title and you've got your cup final. And people are still complaining, do you know? You think, God, we take that. Oh, yeah. When we guys, you'd be like, oh, listen, just forget one <laughs> nothing every game. We're playing oh, terrible football. Just get us there. That's, but that's what I'm saying about football. It's, you're so passionate about your own football club that if you lose to a lower or lesser opposition, they're getting it, we're getting it tight. Yeah. That's it, pure and simple. Yeah. The only thing is, that I now watch cup games hoping there's another upset. Or something. <laughs> 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 now we're like, please. Um, maybe take the pressure off us a little bit, but no. Certainly, certainly all supporting Montrose today after what the SFA put them through this week. <laughs> I know. It's, <laughs> it's just mad you now. The whole thing is it's crazy. Mm. To, to even have football now is, is fortunate. We, mm. we try yeah. to, we're, there's so many highs and lows in football and decisions and people saying this and they've done things wrong and this club's done things wrong and you're like, oh my God, it's, it becomes tit for tat at times. Mm-hmm. We're all trying our best. We really are. And that's, at times, you, the work that goes on behind the scene is incredible. Even to come to a game, it's so difficult and who can go and who can't go and 
protocols and seating arrangements and it's mental. It's absolutely mental now. Um, but come back to the we need fans back and as I said, sooner the better. Um, but when it's safe to do so and I hope to to see fans in, in in the very near future and it would be a great thing for for uh, obviously for the world if we could get back to some sort of normality. It's not going to be what we remember. It's going to be different and it's going to take time. But uh, we need to get back. Football is uh, the lifeblood. It's, uh, it's a huge part of the economy in Scotland. Um, and we just we just love our game here. We really do. We're so passionate. Um, there's highs, lows, good football, bad football. But you'll follow your club. We think yeah. You really do. Uh, and it's, it's guys like yourselves that promote that and speak about it and, and give the platform there for guys like myself um, to speak highly about your club. Um, and I said, I'm very fortunate that I've, I've been there. Uh, I played for Thistle, loved it. Um, but I've been, I've played for a few clubs, obviously. Um, and they're all great in their own way, in their own unique way. Um, and you're playing mm-hmm. for the club as well. You, you form rapport, uh, you form a bond with fans. And you're remembered fondly for certain things. Obviously, I still get a few fans that call me a Thistle reject or whatever. When I go back there. <laughs> um, and I take that as banter, obviously. And then they start call me a baldy whatever or something like that. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> I'll well, just put well, it okay, a while before we're splitting pies at you anyway, probably. Yeah. I don't know, but oh, damn, it's, as I say, it's banner. It's, it's an outlet for some folk. They just, they want the best for their club. So if it's a distraction element of the goalkeeper, the players, they see it. But I'll be honest, at the end of the day, I've, I've, I've applauded opposition fans because I love their play. You've given me belters, no bother. I'm not no. that against you. Uh, as I said, the guy verbally abused me and, and I told the police, do not charge this guy. Please do not charge him. It's, um, no. if, folk, if folk overstep the mark, it's yeah. wrong. Yeah. Of course, he deserves to be punished. But yeah, of course. He had a good day. He had a right good day. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> well, well, do you know, do you know I, I look forward to the day that we're, we're all at Tyne Castle and we can start, we can go to the front row, guys, and we'll start the chant, that's what we check towards the half <laughs> <laughs> It's honestly brilliant. I was like, no, I kind of left. It was like, no, oh, you know, you're fucking shite. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> at least you know I caught it like Scott Fox and he left for Ross County. <laughs> I used to remember someone who was like, he was getting pelted. You're just, just a shite Paul Gallagher. <laughs> it's great to get, uh, obviously, as I said, you like your ego getting stroked at times and told you've done well and that sort of thing. But I'm, I'm old enough and old enough to know that I've done well at times and other times you make mistakes, you deserve critique and whatever. But um, I've got fond memories, I really have of, of my time at this. So, really have, as I say, great, great staff, fans were brilliant with me, they really were. Um, and it helps you as a player as well because it's always difficult. You, you want to try your best, and we know at certain clubs you're the underdogs, you're the small club. Thank you, that back and it lifts you, it really does. It gives you that little boost you require, um, and they play a huge role um, in your mindset and your preparation. And just when you think you've you no got that energy, they give you that boost, and it's it's, it's brilliant to see at times. And, and now, as a coach, you kind of sit back and you can see that more because when you're on the pitch, it's the best place to be at times when there's things happening. You're on the pitch, so you're, you're fully focused on the game, and it's brilliant. But now, seeing it, you just see. You can see fans back in the stadium. You really do. They bring yeah. songs and the songs they sing and the banter and it's class. It really is. It's class. Brilliant. So well, hopefully sooner rather than later we will see yeah, fans yeah. back, back yeah. in to, to the stadiums. Of course, we get the Euros to look forward to in the summer as well. So you know, and hope that there does seem there's going to be some fans back in there. So it'd be nice even if, if it's only for one game at the end of the season for all the clubs to maybe get a chance to get them back in. Um, Paul, I want to say thank you so much for giving up your time this morning yeah. with us. It's been absolutely brilliant. And I know I speak for not just us, but, but all of us fans, was it? we loved watching you and it was great. And I don't think anybody can deny it. We, we were talking about it off air. Never ever saw you make a mistake at Fun Hill, so it must have been a good, t- good couple of seasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's honestly, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, really nice, I enjoyed it. Um, and it's very kind words you say there. I'm um, very appreciative of that. As I said, I enjoyed my time there. And uh, I gave it my all. That was it. Whether I'm playing or whether I'm coaching and pushing the goalkeepers. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, as I say, I'm very humbled um, by your words there, Remy. Um, very, 
very humbled indeed, uh, and I thank you for that. Um, but uh, no, great, great banter, great chat, guys. Honestly, I really appreciate this. Oh. It's nice to be to ask to do these sort of things. Um, so no, thank you. No, as I say, thank you very much again, Paul, for giving your times and and mate, we'll always have the heat on Friday. The Donners and Alan Fraser as well. Um, yes. great to see you. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, in the meantime, uh, look after yourself, stay safe, um, just follow the guidelines and, and don't do anything silly. And we'll see you next week. So, on the Jags. On the Jags. Gents, all the very best.